Good morning everyone! As usual it's a beautiful day and I'm about to head into university for some training today but I have discovered something a little bit unique this morning which I thought you might enjoy. So currently we have herbs inside the house which are going well except there's some little munchins been into them and we couldn't find the cold pro or who it was or what it was but I think we have found this little fat chunky caterpillar who's gotten so fat that he's climbed up this pot and he's stuck himself on there and he's turning into a butterfly. So I think this will be nice because I think he's due to come out roughly at the end of my exam. So that'll be a nice reward slash exciting event. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be here. Otherwise we might have to pop the pot outside, but I just thought it was cute. gotten here way too early. Nothing's open so I think I'll do a little bit of study. And also just while I'm waiting I wanted to thank everyone who's been commenting on my videos giving me lots of encouragement. I know I'm still learning and the content has changed a little bit because we're swinging from placement to learning blocks so thank you so much for being patient and the feedback is always really appreciated. After a short while of study it was time to get started. Up on the agenda today is nasogastric tube placement training. What is a nasogastric tube, you may ask? As its name would suggest, nasogastric, meaning nose-stomach tube. It's a flexible plastic tube that you might have seen inserted into someone's nose that goes directly down into their stomach. It can be used for putting things into the stomach, like nutrients or medications, or for taking things out, like gastric contents drainage, in the case of gastrointestinal obstruction or even toxic ingestion. As always, before we start any procedure, we're given some basic instructions on how to perform the procedure first, what tools we'll require, and some complications to watch out for. We learned about the different types of nasogastric tubes, but the one we're using today is the very commonly used Salem sump, which has two attachments. The double attachment allows for better suction tasks if required. The wider side is used for the suction itself, while the other side equalizes the vacuum pressure, which reduces the chance of the tube getting stuck on the lining of your stomach when it's suctioning. Now, before we even put the tube in, there's a few things we had to do first. Firstly, there's some nasal spray that helps numb the nasal passages. We also have some lubricating gels so the tube goes in more comfortably and smoothly. And we also need to get the Salem sump ready, as well as making sure we have a special adhesive tape ready to secure the tube once it's placed in. Now, of course, everybody's body is different, so we have to measure how much tube we exactly need. You wouldn't want the tube only going halfway down the esophagus, the food pipe, for example. It's just not going to do the job there. Now, to measure how much tube we actually need, we get the tube and we start measuring from the nose to the ear down to the xiphoid sternum, also known as the xiphoid process. It's just the fancy way of saying this part right here. This little process is actually really easy to feel on yourself. It's at the very base of your sternum where your sternum stops. Now for the fun part, let's give it a go. Definitely the right nose. Nose, nose. nose. <laughs> 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 nostril. The nasal passage is surprisingly more horizontal than you might think, which is why you don't see us coming straight up from under the nose. Once you feel some resistance after putting the tube in for a while, you descend down into the throat and you often will get the patient to drink some water just to help guide the tube down into the esophagus, also known as the food pipe, and also help reduce that normal gagging reflex which patients can't control. So you're gonna start gagging Gerald's and you have some water for me. Oh. Right, really good job, good job Gerald. You're doing good. <laughs> so much is it? Who's his water Sarah? Alright, great, great job. I'm gonna stomach yeah. on the x-ray. Alright, and then I put this on like this. 
do that and then I'm back around. Yeah, I'm gonna do that done. But I won't use that. Despite this being a relatively straightforward procedure, there are of course some complications. The main risk of all this is it ending up in the lungs, so placement is usually confirmed by imaging before anything is actually put down into the tube. That session went so fast, it was basically, you know, put the anaesthetic in, put the lube on, in and done with your little band-aid. So I basically we finished half an hour early so I'm gonna do some study but before I do that I want to talk to you about a case involving some of the complications that can arise from misplaced NG tubes and it's crazy because it was so easy to place I thought you know it feels easy to do and so many things can go wrong so stay tuned I'm gonna to talk to you about that very very shortly so imagine this you're working in emergency and they wheel in a 44-year-old male after a motor vehicle accident. An NG tube is placed closely after arrival, and as per protocol, they do a scan to check the placement. But when they look at the scan, not only is it placed in the wrong place, but it's actually in the brain. This was because this patient had severe facial maxillary trauma after the accident. There are some really thin bones up there, such as the cribriform plate, and there's not really that much bone between the back of your nasal passage and your brain. So you could imagine if there's any sort of damage in this area and you're poking a tube somewhere, it could pop straight through into the brain. Thankfully, they picked up this quite quickly and the case report says he made a reasonable recovery. But it is a good reminder for students as well as all healthcare workers to be careful even with something that is generally a benign and simple procedure. Not that this would happen to most people, and this is a very rare instance, but it's good to just check if there's any contraindications such as severe facial trauma before even considering a simple procedure like this. So there's a interesting case for you, and if you wanna know more about it, I'll put a link in the description below. And that brings me to the end of the video. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. And if you didn't, leave a comment down below on what I can improve on. So I'll see you next time.